The Ultimate Aerial Glaive is here. Welcome back to Skill Simulator, I, I mean Monster Hunter. Sky Sensei here with another updated Insect Glaive build. Now this build is absolutely bonkers. Now we'll say some of the skills might be a little different. You might need to change it around because of choreo crafting. The exact build becomes hard to replicate. So I'm going to list out the skills that you need to be focusing on to be able to build the ultimate aerial playstyle glaive. So without further ado, let's grab a wire bug and head on out. So the weapon being used here is the Lucent Narga Blade, still one of the highest raw damage and affinity blades out there and it's still my personal favorite. You want to keep upgrading this weapon until you reach that final highest anomaly rank. Once you get the weapon fully upgraded, you'll actually get 20 plus sharpness which is huge and 40 plus attack automatically. In addition, you want to do one rampage upgrade slot to be able to use the new supercharge jewel. Supercharge buffs your kinsect damage making all kinsects viable. So at this point, it's just a must have jewel for all glaive users. After this, I boosted attack since status is too low and infrequent on most monsters and affinity isn't needed since this build does reach 100% affinity on your own. For the armor, we have the Lucent Helm, Amatsu Chest, Arms and Legs, and the Risen Shagura Magala Waist. I'll discuss the talisman in a little bit, but it can change out depending on your talismans. So let's talk about the basic expected skills that are already on the build with the armor. Then we'll talk about the quarrio and jewels that can vary up a little bit depending on what you get. So the first skill I want to talk about, Heaven Sent, the new infinite stamina and infinite sharpness skill, maxed out thanks to the Amatsu armor. This is the main skill that this build focuses around and it lets you play Aerial Glaive with ease. Having infinite stamina and infinite sharpness means you can continuously attack and dodge, attack and dodge in the air using Kinsek Slash and thanks to the supercharged jewel, your Kinsek also does more damage. We also have critical boost max with the Amatsu armor as well. We also have two points of wex that come from the waist so I recommend you add one more jewel to complete it like I did here on the helmet. Thanks to this, our talisman will not need to focus on wax and instead you can use the talisman for skills that don't have jewels. Agitator is already level 3 from the Lucent Helm so I'd recommend you add a challenger plus jewel on one of the 4 slots to complete it. Bloodlust is also already present on this build thanks to the Shigura Waste which grants you extra damage when you are inflicted with the Mangala virus. Once you cleanse the virus you gain 20% affinity for 1 minute and you do that by just hitting the monster enough to cleanse yourself. So with these skills, your crit value on weak parts while a monster is agitated and bloodlust is activated is 85%. With heaven sent, your stamina never reduces, so I recommend you add a mighty jewel plus which grants 20% for having max stamina. Finally, there's also one handicraft level on the helm. This is just some extra sharpness to add to your weapon upgrade. It's honestly, you already have more than enough when combined with heaven sent. So these are the basic skills of the build. Let's talk about the skills that you want to add with jewels, quarry crafting, and charms. Now keep in mind that these skills will differ where you get them from based on what you roll. If you roll a different skill on the armor, you may need to change a couple of jewels out or charm to make up for it. However, there are skills that you only get from charms or quarry crafting, so I recommend you focus on those for your rolls. So let's start with Intrepid Heart, which nullifies one hit from the monster when you have the energy bar filled up. The main goal of the skill is to nullify one attack, so you still maintain Heaven Sent. This means you can get hit once in a while and not lose your infinite stamina status. So this one time invincibility is pretty useful for two situations. For one, if you're about to finish a combo attack and you see the monster about to attack you. If it's a single attack, go ahead and tank it and get your damage off. Number two is really just to protect you from one shot attacks. You can see in this example here, I'm about to get nuked and I actually do get nuked, but because of Intrepid Heart, I survive and I can just go on attacking because I haven't lost Heaven Sent. My recommendation is to use level one and just use a level one jewel for this. Don't waste a charm or a choreocraft on this skill. In my opinion, that's all you need, but honestly, it depends how often you get hit. I don't need level two since I'm fairly confident in most hunts that I won't get hit. So it's a precaution for me to just maintain heaven sent rather than using level 2 to return some damage. Next up, Powder Mantle is fantastic. It's a whole bunch of extra damage and it combos with your Kinsect. 
Now, Powder Mantle works by simply building up energy while you land hits on the monster. After 33 hits with the Glaive, you will glow orange and at this point, if you get hit, you release all that energy into an explosive damage. If you don't get hit for 10 seconds, the color changes to blue. Now, while you're at blue stage, your next attack will release all this energy into an explosive damage. So either way, you deliver a huge amount of damage to the monster. Now your Kinsect meshes with this really well because its own attacks also add to the hit counter. So it helps you reach max Powder Mantle faster. The Kinsect can also detonate your Powder Mantle while you are in blue stage. The damage is also pretty significant for Insect Glaive. It's like hitting a level 2 or level 3 Diving Wyvern, but for free. Literally without doing anything else special. So it's absolutely worth so you must aim to Choreograph this on the skill or get a good charm that provides level 2 or 3. Actually, if it's on the charm, you really want to try to aim for level 3. Keep in mind, the damage does not change after level 1, but the number of hits significantly reduces. For level 2, it takes 24 hits for the Glaive, which is a big decrease from 33. Level 3 takes 17 hits. I rolled them through choreographing on the helm and arms, and I got to level 2, which was enough for me. I didn't get a good charm with the Powder Mantle since I got a better charm using the skilled Build Up Boost. Now Build Up Boost increases your damage when you land an attack that inflicts a status on the monster. So this works decently well with the Lucid Nargakuga Blade. Even if Lucid Nargakuga has low poison, each hit that tries to inflict poison immediately gets a 20% boost in damage since my charm has it maxed out. So again, another skill you want to roll or use a charm for because it doesn't have a jewel. This charm is actually really insane. I have build up boost max and attack boost 2 and 2 level 2 slots. So an absolutely insane charm, but I've seen better. So the drop rate for god tier charms isn't as bad as it was in base rise. The next choreographed skill I have is Mail of Hellfire on the legs. As you guys probably know, this is one of my favorite skills since it's basically just a passive damage boost. Just being on the red scroll gives me an extra plus 15 attack which is honestly good enough. Just extra damage at the expense of a little bit of defense. But that's really okay with this aerial playstyle with Heaven Sent. You want to avoid getting hit plus you have Intrepid Heart which nullifies one hit. The last choreographed skill I want to mention here is the Wind Mantle on the Waist. Now this isn't a necessary skill per se, but it's a really neat skill. Once you use a Silk Bind attack, the Wirebug Gauge Recovery gets boosted as long as you continue to land attacks. The boost is 10%, so it's not like a huge amount, but you can know, help. You can do more diving wyverns in a hunt. You can dodge around with the Wirebug skill. It's pretty helpful. Quite honestly, though, I haven't got a better roll on the waist, but the waist is actually one of the more flexible parts. Choreo Crafting likes to give you better skills when it takes away skills. And Frenzied Bloodlust is a skill that's not entirely necessary for Insect Glaive. Sure, it's good to have like an extra wire bug for a short period of time, but honestly, if you can roll this off and get a better skill, that would be way more ideal. So compared to the other armors in this set that have crucial skills, this skill on the waist is definitely something that you could freely give up for something better. So that's it for the choreo skills. The last choreo craft that I had was on the chest piece and I just got a level 2 upgrade. A jewel upgrade is not actually the worst thing in the world too. I put in a power prolonger here just to extend my Kinsec buff up time. Quite honestly, I just ran out of materials and settled for it. So I'll keep rolling it and I'll update you guys in the comments below. But for now, the level 2 goes a long way. I added a level 4 enhancer jewel on my legs to max out power prolonger giving me a boost in Kinsec buff time, meaning I could focus on my damage for much longer. So the remaining skills I have on this build from the jewels include attack boost 7 using 2 from the charm, 2 level 4 jewels on my chest piece, and 1 level 2 jewel on the waist. Coalescence is granted at level 3, 1 from a level 4 jewel on the chest, and 1 level 2 jewel on the charm. Coalescence just synergizes really well with Bloodlust since it grants you extra damage when you cleanse yourself from an ailment. The Bagala virus, even though it's self-inflicted with the bloodless skill, counts as an ailment. So when you clear yourself after attacking the monster, you activate Coalescence giving you that extra 18 plus attack on top of the 20% affinity coming from bloodlust. Next up is Resentment, which is another favorite skill of mine and pairs well with bloodlust. 
While Bloodlust infects you, you lose 20% affinity, but you also take damage over time which appears as red recoverable health. Resentment conveniently grants you extra attack when you have red recoverable health, so it's a perfect combo to just balance out your damage. I have this maxed out with 2 level 4 jewels on the legs and 1 level 2 jewel on the charm slot. Again if you don't have the charm slot, level 4 is still good enough because that's still plus 20 attack. The final skill I want to mention here is Burst. Burst grants you boosted damage after you do 5 hits and you maintain that boosted damage unless you stop attacking for 2 seconds. I have it at level 1 here just by using a level 2 jewel slot on my weapon. It's not entirely worth to go up to level 3 just because it adds just 5 attack and that's not really worth a level 4 jewel slot. If you do roll it on armor though, by all means enjoy the extra damage. So that's it for this build hunters. In my opinion, the only thing that this build is missing is a powder mantle level 3. I will keep re-rolling my waist and chest piece for another powder mantle. If I do get it, I'll let you guys know in the comments below, but I really think that's the last thing to make this build complete. So I thought I'd just put the video together anyway because at least you guys get the picture. A final note I want to make here is that many of you might ask me about Adrenaline Rush. Now yes, this skill is absolutely fantastic for Insect Glaive, but it's much more beneficial when you use Ground Glaive in my opinion. If you're in the air, especially with Heaven Scent that gives you infinite stamina, you can jump and reposition well before a monster actually attacks you and in my opinion, that's much better. You need to be positioned and ready to attack rather than barely dodging a monster and then scrambling to attack. So of course it's up to your playstyle if you find you're more on the ground or you are actually like dodging at the last minute then maybe Adrenaline Rush is a little bit more helpful to you and Heaven Scent might not be necessary. Adrenaline Rush does have jewels though so it's very easy to add on to any build. So that's it for the ultimate Aerial Insect Glaive guys. It is absolutely insane. I love playing Aerial Glaive so so much now and the damage is unreal. I hope this helps you guys out and I wish you the best of luck on your Quario rolls and reaching level 241 anomaly rank. It is by far the most painful grind ever. I've put in over 100 hours in the last few days, so I need sleep and rest and I need to go outside and touch grass as soon as this video is scheduled. I'm just, I'm done, I'm done. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to comment below on your thoughts on the build, how far along you guys are. If you guys would like to hunt with the community, come join the discord. We could always use more hunters. So until next time hunters, thank you for watching, take care, stay safe, and keep hunting. Sky Sensei is out.